What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with my review of the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro 5G. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is one of the latest affordable 5G devices being sold by T-Mobile. You can get this phone at both the regular T-Mobile and also at Metro by T-Mobile. And it does feature an MSRP of 219 However, I'd imagine that most people that end up getting this phone will not be paying the full retail price for it, as T-Mobile does tend to offer their Revels at a variety of different discounts and promotions. I know that at the moment, you can actually get this phone at Metro for just $39.99. So certainly a lot of value here, and in this video, I wanna go over everything there is to know about this phone so that there are no potential surprises if you happen to end up getting it. Now here's the box that the device does come in. You can see right there, T-Mobile Revel, and then on the back, just some regulatory information. Then opening up the box, we have this packet here first, which we'll get into in a second. We also have a SIM card removal tool. And then in the packet, we have a USB-C cable for charging and data transfer. And then we also have some literature and a quick start guide. So there is no wall charger included, so definitely keep that in mind. So if you happen to have one already, then that's great. But if you don't, then you will have to go out and buy one. Now with the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro 5G, we have a very large 6.82 inch display. So this is excellent for watching video content, for example, as we have a very large canvas here. But also if you wanna go on social media or read eBooks or look at articles, all of those various things will be a lot better because of this large display. Now it is 720p, so no 1080p panel here, unfortunately. But for what it is, I do feel like things do look decently crisp and clear. Now the phone does feature a PPI of 263, and we are getting a 20 and a half by nine aspect ratio. So a more narrow but taller form factor here. And when you are on social media, for example, this tall form factor does help quite a bit because technically you don't have to scroll quite as much through your feed because this aspect ratio fits more of your feed in a single frame. So it does make things a bit more convenient, especially with how people use their smartphones nowadays. Now with the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro 5G, we do have a 16 megapixel front facing camera and stay tuned for later on in the video as I'll be showing you a variety of different photo and video samples from all the various cameras on here. One thing to keep in mind though, and I will address this again later in the video as well, but there is no portrait mode with the front facing camera, which is a bit of a surprise. That's pretty much a feature I expect with nearly any smartphone regardless of price. So I'm surprised that's not here, but just keep in mind that that feature is not present. Now on a more positive note, this device features a lot of internal storage. So we are getting 128 gigabytes and in addition to that, the device does support micro SD card expansion. Now I'd imagine for most people out there, 128 gigs will be more than enough so you probably won't need the SD card. And that's certainly a good thing though, because it is frustrating if you end up getting a phone that doesn't have a lot of internal storage and you end up filling that up. So hopefully with this device, due to it having so much storage, you'll get a lot of longevity out of it and you won't be motivated to upgrade your smartphone just because you don't have enough space. Now there is another surprise with this phone and that is that it actually does have wireless charging. Now wireless charging is a feature that you typically see with kind of more upper end, mid range phones and especially the flagship devices but it's very rare and uncommon to find a phone in this particular price segment that does actually have wireless charging. Now, I like wireless charging for two different reasons. The first reason is, it is very convenient. I have a lot of wireless charging pads around my home. So for example, I have one by my bed, I have another in my office, another in the kitchen. So it's really convenient just to place the phone down on the wireless charger to get it charged. But another benefit with having wireless charging is that if for some reason you happen to damage the charging port on the phone, then at least you do have an alternative method to keep the phone recharged until you are able to get that fixed. So overall, I see no downsides with having wireless charging. And again, that's something that you typically don't find with devices in this particular segment. Another awesome thing about this phone too is that it does feature a fingerprint sensor on the power button. So as you can see, it does feature a T-Mobile magenta accent here on that power button, but you can also use it as the fingerprint sensor. So I'll give that a try right now. You can see very fast there and accurate. We'll try it again. So, you know, despite this being a lower end phone, they did do an excellent job with the implementation of that fingerprint sensor. And in addition to that, this phone does support face unlock, so I do appreciate that we have multiple methods for accessing the device. Now on the back of the phone, we have a quad camera setup, giving us a 50 megapixel main camera, a five megapixel ultra wide angle camera, 
a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera, and a 2 megapixel macro camera for close up images. Now, you certainly shouldn't expect the quality from any of the cameras on this device to be anywhere near what you'd get with a much more expensive device, such as maybe a $1,000 phone, for example. But at the same time, I do appreciate that we are getting all these various features because maybe you find yourself using the macro camera a lot or using the ultra wide camera a lot. Then that might give you a further justification to spend a bit more on your device next time around. So even though these features aren't necessarily as good as they could be since this is a lower end device, at least you have a preview of what it's like having those features. So here's how things look with the standard main camera right now. Now keep in mind that if you do want to capture images in the full 50 megapixels, you will have to go over to the more tab here and access the 50M, so that will do that. Now the reason why the 50 megapixel photos is not enabled by default is because those photos do tend to take up quite a bit of space on the device. So I'd imagine they assume that most people might want that feature, but at the same time, don't want it enabled by default because they don't want their phone filling up very quickly. But then from here, we can go over to this point five to take us over to the ultra wide angle camera we're gonna fit a lot more content into the frame. Now, I'm personally a big fan of having an ultra wide camera, and even if it's not nearly as good of quality as the main camera, as they typically give the ultra wide camera sensors that are not as good, and the megapixel count is a lot lower, but at the same time, it still can be helpful, especially if I'm on vacation, for example, maybe taking a picture of a large building or a lot of scenery around me. Having that ultra wide camera is definitely a great way to kind of change things up a bit. Now then from here, we can go over to the more tab and access the macro camera, and then with that, we can get very close up and have things be in really good detail here. So the macro camera is kind of a feature that you might not use a whole lot, but at the same time, I personally don't see a problem with having the feature. There's certainly no downside with having it. Then from there, you can go over to live focus to get portrait mode, so you can get those nice blurred out backgrounds. There's even a slider here to further adjust that to the way you want it to be. However, like I mentioned earlier, one surprising thing about this device is that there is no portrait mode for the front facing camera. Now, typically, I end up using portrait mode for the selfie camera more than the rear camera, so this is certainly a big deal for me. Now, I'm not sure if it's necessarily a deal breaker, and thankfully, the front facing camera does look very good as it is, so that's at least good, but I don't see why they didn't give it some sort of portrait mode function here. It just makes no sense. Now, typically on any other device, if you're on the front camera, as I am right here, you then go over to live focus or portrait mode or whatever they want to call it, and then you get those blurred out backgrounds. But you can see here that I'm in the front facing camera mode, and when I want to go over to live focus, it flips things around to the rear camera. So there is unfortunately no portrait mode with this phone. Another thing too to keep in mind is that there is no 4K video recording. Now that's not necessarily as big of a deal for me, but just keep that in mind. This phone can record video at a maximum of 1080p with both the front and rear cameras, which again, I feel like that is adequate for most people. But if for some reason your current phone does have 4K video recording and you assume that's a standard feature with pretty much any Android smartphone, then just know that you're not getting that here with the T-Mobile Rebel 6 Pro 5G. Now this device features six gigabytes of RAM paired up with the MediaTek Dimensity 700 processor. Now overall, I do feel like that is a very good configuration. This phone definitely does perform pretty well, especially for a lower end device. Now, in addition to having good performance from that processor, and as the name of the phone does imply, this phone does support 5G connectivity. Now at this point in very late 2022, you certainly can get by with just 4G LTE, but at the same time, I feel like if you're putting the time and effort into buying a brand new device, you may as well get one that does support your carrier's latest and greatest network. So I am glad that this phone does support 5G. Now I did run a benchmark test using Geekbench 5 to kind of give you a better indication of how this phone might measure up to other devices. But here are the scores. I got a single core score of 539 and a multi-core score of 1599. So what I recommend doing is running this test on your current phone and then comparing your scores to these scores to get a better idea of how the T-Mobile Rebel 6 Pro 5G compares to your current device. Because it certainly is possible that this phone could be a performance downgrade compared to what you currently have. So it really just depends. Now as far as battery capacity goes, with this phone we are getting a 5000 mAh internal battery, so pretty generous there overall and definitely expect to get a full day, if not multiple days of usage on a single charge. Now this phone is running Android 12 out of the box, which is great. We do have Android 13 out right now, but overall, I'm glad it at least does have Android 12. Now I'm not sure if, when, or ever it's gonna get Android 13 or any other newer versions of Android, as they haven't really promised that at all with this phone, so it is possible that we might be stuck in Android 12 forever. Now, this phone also has NFC, which is great, so if you like to make mobile contactless payments using tap and pay, 
then you can do that here. Now with the exception of not having portrait mode for the front facing camera, I'm actually really happy with the photo and video quality from the T-Mobile Rebel 6 Pro 5G in general. I feel like for what it is, the photos look great, nice crisp colors, everything looks really clear. So, you know, it's not gonna be nearly as good as a smartphone that's three or four times the price. But again, for what it is, I feel like you can take really good, usable photos. Maybe you're on vacation, maybe you're at a family gathering, whatever you're doing, I feel like you can definitely take images here that are worth sharing on social media, printing out for your scrapbook, and various things like that. So definitely, as far as the cameras go on here, it would be nice to have portrait mode for the front-facing camera, but at least for all the other various cameras and camera features, it does do a really good job. But let's now take a look at some video samples from the T-Mobile Rebel 6 Pro 5G. What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with a 1080p front-facing test video from the T-Mobile Rebel 6 Pro 5G. Definitely curious to know what you think about the video and audio quality. And here's a 1080p test video using the main rear camera with the T-Mobile Rebel 6 Pro 5G. Now what's cool about this device is that you can actually switch between the main and ultra-wide cameras while taking the same video clip. So let's switch cameras right now. And now we're using the ultra-wide camera. So as you can see, you can fit a lot more content into the frame. The camera is not quite as good, but at the same time, it is still at least nice that we have this ability here. And let's now switch back to the standard camera. And then we do have autofocus in video mode, so that is nice. Now taking a closer look at the hardware of the T-Mobile Rebel 6 Pro 5G, it really isn't anything too exciting here. While I do appreciate some little touches such as the magenta accent on the power button, the phone itself really is pretty unexciting and this general design of having a thicker bottom bezel and the water drop notch here has been replicated so many times on so many different devices from so many different brands. So I'm very used to this. I mean this phone easily could have launched in 2018 and it would have fit right in with other phones being released. So really nothing new here as far as the design goes. But on the other hand, if I had to guess, I think most people that end up buying this phone just want a good, working, reliable smartphone, and they're not necessarily too concerned about having the most interesting or new or modern design. Now the phone is made completely of plastic, so also keep that in mind. So I do recommend pairing it up with some sort of case, just so the phone doesn't get scratched up as time goes on. Now on the left side of the device, we have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. Then on the right side, we have volume up, volume down, and the power button, which is also the fingerprint sensor. Then up top here, we have the noise canceling microphone. And then on the bottom of the phone, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, microphone, USB-C port for charging and data transfer, and we have the speaker. And then on the back of the phone, we have the T-Mobile logo, and that quad camera setup, along with the flash. And I do appreciate that we have a matte finish on the back of the phone, as it doesn't really pick up too many fingerprints, which is certainly the way I prefer it to be. This phone is not being offered at US carriers. However, I'm definitely expecting it to make its way over to those carriers at some point. But at least for now, you can buy this device factory unlocked, and this is the international model. So as I mentioned earlier on in the video, I do think the T-Mobile Rebel 6 Pro 5G is an excellent phone for watching video content. As you can see, we can crop in and get a very immersive experience here. And in general, we can view the video on a very large display panel here. So overall, that's great. And even though it is only 720p, I do think that things do still look really good. Now, as far as audio quality goes, it does get pretty loud from the main speaker. However, keep in mind that there is no stereo audio. So on some more expensive, more advanced devices, you'll get audio coming out of both the main speaker and the earpiece as well. But for this phone, it's just coming out of the main speaker. Now, overall, that's fine, but it could have been better if it did have stereo audio. But this concludes my review of the T-Mobile Rebel 6 Pro 5G. Most importantly, I'm really curious to know what you think of this device. Do you think it's a worthy option? Do you think it's a good phone that T-Mobile launched? Or were you hoping to get something even better? Definitely curious to know what you think and tell me in the comments section below. But this is Kevin here. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.